If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you've got at least one pack of Eagle Claw snailed hooks lurking somewhere in your tackle box. There's no telling how many core memories have been built with nothing but a tub of night crawlers, a couple of plastic bobbers, and a pack of hooks just like this. This pack has not changed much since I was a kid, which might be why it's so iconic to anglers of all ages. Well, everybody knows this photo, which has actually become a registered trademark of the Wright McGill Company. Few know who this man is. Well, on today's episode of Retro Bass, and we're not only going to take a look at the history of Eagle Claw hooks, but we're also going to reveal who is that mystery man holding up perhaps the most iconic fish stringer ever photographed. Stick around. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing, fishing it old school. This old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. And if this is your first time here and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post the new video, just like this one. And before we get going, I do want to give a big thank you and shout out to Stefan and the entire team over at Eagle Claw. He was great at providing both information and photography used in this history of episode. Now, let's jump into the history of Eagle Claw hooks. By the way, this is a new old stock pack of hooks I picked up. Uh, from Jensen Fish Tackle in Austin, Texas, and <laughs> look at how glorious that old school packaging is. <laughs> I'm not going to open these, by the way. As its name might suggest, Wright McGill, formed in the 1920s, was a result of a collaboration between two young avid anglers, one by the name of Drew McGill and the other Stan Wright. Both the product's name and design were the result of one fateful fishing trip that Drew McGill took to the upper Colorado River. While native trout were hungry and rising to flies that day, for whatever reason, Drew McGill was having trouble hooking them. Taking a break after a missed fish, he observed a pair of bald eagles flying above him before the pair eventually landed on a dead cottonwood. McGill noticed how effortlessly the eagles' talons pierced into the weathered wood. This gave McGill the idea to test the piercing ability of his own hooks. And as he slid them across his leather creel, the hooks made a mark, but they would not pierce. He then used a pair of pliers to bend the hooks into a shape that more closely resembled an eagle's claw. And wouldn't you know, the hooks immediately pierced the leather. McGill hastily modified all his hooks that way, and soon began hooking and landing trout he had previously missed. The talon bend was one of the biggest innovations in fish hooks in hundreds of years, and in 1938, Eagle Claw became a registered trademark of the Wright McGill Company, employing a growing number of workers in the Denver, Colorado area. By 1949, the Wright McGill Company owned and operated the world's only automatic hook making machines. The new machines barbed, shaped, eyed, and pointed the famed Eagle Claw hooks in one operation. Wright and McGill soon produced thousands of hooks on the new equipment. In addition to hooks, the company would go on to produce a line of flies, fishing lures, and rods and reels on their state-of-the-art equipment. Now, let's get to that mystery man on the package. I always thought that this photo was either Drew McGill or Stan Wright, one of Eagle Claw's two founders, but in fact, he is neither. The mystery man on the package is actually an Eagle Claw employee by the name of Paul Mount, who joined the company in 1938. Among his other duties, Paul was in charge of arranging VIP fishing trips. And in 1942, he was tasked with organizing an excursion on the Colorado River with actor Dennis Morgan and Eagle Claw founders Wright and McGill. The fish represented the group's daily creel of rainbow trout, 
the floppy hat owned by Drew McGill, and the stringer was actually an Eagle Claw Granger fly rod that sold for $100 in 1942. Now, when you adjust for the rate of inflation, that is a $1,875 fish stringer. It is no wonder that Drew McGill often joked that Paul was not very particular with what he used to string up fish. With over a billion packs of Eagle Claw hooks sold since that fateful day in 1942, Paul's likeness could well be one of the most duplicated personal photographs on a consumer product ever. And nearly 100 years after Drew McGill first observed a pair of eagles that inspired his design, Eagle Claw Hooks remains a leading manufacturer of fishing hooks and fishing-related equipment. Now, the next time you pass a peg of snelled hooks, you'll know the name and story of perhaps the most famous fish stringer ever photographed. If you enjoyed this History of episode, be sure to drop some video ideas down below in the comment section. And if you would like a walkthrough of this 1968 Eagle Claw catalog sent to me by Stefan, definitely let me know. In the meantime, if you're looking for some more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.